Winston just said to me, Felix, what are the stocks you're buying this month? Anything exciting? Anything you want to share? And I thought, oh, that's a good idea, Winston. Um, he's, in fact, done most of the sniffing out, so I blame him. This is in financial advice. And I'm going to walk you through nine stocks here. I'm going to give you the actual data. I will also show you what the current setup is. This is a good time to buy. And I will also show you what trades Wall Street's making on these live because we can have we have access to that data. We see into the dark pools where those bastards trade. Sorry, bankers trade. Uh, so stock number one, and this is one you've never heard of before. It's a small sort of device manufacturer. Uh, they've got about 1.3 billion devices out there. And of course, it is it is the big Apple. Why do I like Apple? Okay, There is some stuff that's negative on Apple right now. But just look at the fundamentals. They have a gross margin of 43%. They have people sleeping in the street in the rain to get their hands on their phones. They have a return on invested capital of 28%. If you just look at those two numbers and you don't know what the business is, you should basically go, I want some. And their profits are growing about eight, nine percent year on year, which is not terrible when you're that big. Now, it's a quote here, which says, Apple continues to dominate the tech landscape. With its recent launch of the Apple Vision Pro, the company is pushing into the AR VR market. According to Bloomberg, Apple has already sold over 200,000 units in the first month, exceeding expectations. This could open up a whole new revenue stream for the tech giant. So, are they doing everything right? No, they're not. No, they're not. But they have over a billion handsets out there. And all they got to do is keep growing the software revenue from, from that. Already, software is half of the profits of Apple. So Apple is becoming a software company, a SaaS business, whatever you want to call it, which has a very, very large number of devices out there, which is how you get access to it. So for that reason alone, I just like it. I, I just think they're going to do well. I think people are going to buy new devices because they're going to need faster devices to use AI features. And therefore, they're going to buy the new iPhone. If just a quarter of the people who have iPhones out there buy a new device because their devices are like three, four, five years old, that's a quarter of a billion iPhones. And each one will then come also with incrementally more more revenue. So I, I like Apple for that, for that reason. If we have a look on the screen here in, in Trade Vision, so what do you what do you see? Let me just turn off the indicator in the background here. Well, you we had a bit of a flirtation here with the 215, 218. We came down a little bit, now we're coming back up. Uh, still struggling with that sort of 215 line here, which is if I may draw a line. May I draw a line? It's sort of here. But where is the real resistance, as they say in, in France? Well, what do you look for? See these green bars here? The bigger the green bar, the stronger your resistance. So 220 is probably the real resistance up here. So I'd say break through 220 and the party is on. That's the way I, I look at that. I look for like resistant points on charts. The second thing I look at is like, what's the market doing? What is Wall Street doing? And again, we can type into a little smart tracker here. And we can type in AAPL or Apple. And then we can see live every single day, what are the trades being made? There was one trade only made yesterday, 13 hours ago as I'm recording this, $20 million, someone selling a call option. It's a little bearish. Look at all the bearish. There's a lot of bearishness in there, right? So if you were a longer term contrarian like me, then you might actually quite enjoy the bearish. If you're a short term trader, you might want to wait for this to improve just a little bit. But you can spy on what Wall Street's up to. This is These are all the trades from yesterday. And it's getting a bit more mixed. It's all 12 hours ago, last day of the hour of the day. A lot of green and red. It's kind of half-half now, isn't it? It's kind of e pretty even. This is a, maybe the bears still win. Maybe the bears still win a little bit. But I'm a little bit of a contrarian when it comes to buying things. I like buying fundamentally sound companies at a discount. I think Apple still qualifies for that right now. Stock two is builds Microsoft. And why do I like Microsoft? It's kind of hard not to like Microsoft from an investor point of view. 69% gross profit margins, return on invested capital is 22%. Pretty hard to see how that stock was not going to go up in the long run. Profits are going up 12% year on year. And, and their cloud Azure business basically is growing like mad. Um, you got the OpenAI 
partnership, basically integrating OpenAI's AI into the whole suite of Microsoft products, that is going to give Microsoft's enterprise sales some significant push. So for that reason and that reason alone, I, I like it a lot. I think nobody is commercializing AI as well as Microsoft. They're not great at making amazing products, but they are very, very good at selling products. Okay, all-time high, uh, nice rally up. If we turn our little indicator on, it's showing green, green, green since the uh, 11th of, of June in the background, right? That was a nice buy signal there. And right now, the only thing holding us back is the resistance up here at $455. And we are only slightly below that as I'm recording this. So I think it's a fairly decent chance we'll take that out. It's a, it's a fairly big, big candle there. But that's it. You go through 455 and you're like, you know, all the way to the moon. That's the way I look at this. Stock number three, again, it's a, it's a, it's a smallish sort of chip manufacturer, makes gaming cards, um, mostly for uh, super nerds who play strange video games. It's called NVIDIA. That's what NVIDIA was a couple of years ago. The only people who knew NVIDIA were gamers, right? Of course, the story has changed. 65% gross profit margin, which is pretty impressive when you're making chips. I know they outsource it a bit like Apple, but still. Um, return on invested capital is a staggering 40%. So they invest $100. Next year, they have $140. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? And, and don't get me started on profits. They're going up almost 60% year over year, 60% profit growth. So they basically just remain at the forefront of the whole AI revolution. They uh, have just released their next generation GPUs, which will be 50% faster compared to the, the current lot. And that should help NVIDIA maintain its dominance for some time because everybody who bought the old chips is going to have to buy the new chips because they'll be 50% faster. And, and we're going to keep going with that for a while until chips are so fast it makes very little difference. At some point, you're going to get to that, right? If you can, if you can produce an hour-long video in a second, whether you can do it in half a second or a second, it doesn't really move the needle anymore. But until we get to that level, I think NVIDIA's got here some, some fat years ahead. And we can look at the NVIDIA chart. Now, the blue lines I've drawn on here, like this was the uh, January rally up to March. Then we had from early March until pretty much mid-late April, that six-week period when nothing was going on. And then we had exactly the same length rally. Like this line is the same length as that line. Seriously, I copied and pasted it. And then up here now, we're looking at another little bit of a sideways, flattish sort of thing until we get some, some more beautiful news out. So I think it could be an opportunity um, to build up an NVIDIA position. Again, it's of course not financial advice, but it's sort of it's just treading a little bit of water. Everyone's just getting a little bit cautious. A lot of the big hedge funds, a lot of the big investors are selling NVIDIA or have sold NVIDIA. And I can show you that because, well, they've made a lot of money and they've got profit targets. And that's what a smart investor, a trader rather, not investor, a smart trader does that. We basically say we want to make X percent on this trade and then we exit. We don't care if it continues, right? And that's what people do. So if you look here at the last couple of trading hours from yesterday, pretty much all bearish. A lot of bearishness, a lot of bearishness, a lot of bearishness, a few bolts, but mostly it's people being bearish and probably taking profits, hedging their positions and so on. But yeah, it's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty red couple of hours here, right? And you can scroll down, you can see every single large trade made by institutions in, in, in block trades and dark pools here, as is on, on tradevision.io. So get yourself a free trial to that. There's a link down below in the description. Next company on my list is, again, it's a minor book retailer that apparently will deliver a book faster to you than anybody else at a, for a cheaper price. And you can even read it on the e-reader. That was on Amazon a few years ago, wasn't it? People were very excited by that. And then they started selling dog food and other exciting things. Now nobody really cares about retail anymore. Although they do make $80 billion from advertising just off that retail business, which is actually as much, if not more, than their cloud business. So sometimes attention is, is, is drawn to slightly the, the shinier thing. They have 46% gross margins, which are improving because cloud is more profitable than retail. Return on invested capital at 10% isn't brilliant, but their profits are going 15% up year over year. 
And if you just look at how much cash flow they have and how they're investing that into things like robotics and AI and cloud computing and everything that's kind of attached to that, um, pretty impressive. If you've used Claude, the chat GPT competitor backed by Amazon, it's very impressive. I'd say it's probably better. I, I use that kind of stuff quite a lot. I think it's probably better. Um, basically, their business is thriving. It's very simple. And, and now we've got, you know, same day delivery um, in more and more cities. The warehousing and all that stuff is just done so well. Nobody can really get into that. They are the leader in cloud computing. And I suspect they're going to be one of the leaders in robotics. And therefore, I just like the business. I just wouldn't bet against Amazon in any way, shape, or form. Shall we have a look if if Wall Street's betting against Amazon? Last hour of the day, that's a lot of selling, right? That's a lot of selling. But let's look at the let's look at the biggest trades. That's usually what I do. I look at the biggest trades first. That's kind of the most interesting thing. And look, there is a thirty six million dollar bullish trade into September. Two bearish trades. Two bullish, three bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, and so on. So it's a little bit more of a mixed picture, but certainly the biggest amount of money is going, is going into. Uh, is it a good time to buy or sell? Well, we put this in a while ago. We got this sort of trading zone here from 175 to kind of 190. That was sort of the zone we were we were caught in, and people were like, "It's never going to go up again. It's always going to stay in this zone." And then you get the breakout. We've just had the breakout. Does that mean it's now over and you know you're paying too much? It's not really how it works. This is actually the point where you say, "See, sí, amigo, I'm going to buy this stock." Why? Because you broke out on this candle, and then you get the next day, which is your confirmation candle. So now you are a lot more confident. You've actually given up a lot of risk for a slightly smaller reward, but. I think the stock's going to keep going. The next resistance up here sits quite quite majorly at two hundred dollars. That's for um for this week. Let me just look into into July as well. Suspect it's quite similar. Yeah, still at two hundred dollars. So you need to break through two hundred. That'll that'll hold you up a little bit uh, once you are two hundred. Party up. The next stock is um, minor search engine called uh, Alphabet or Google, do no evil. Remember those days um, when they all looked a bit more nerdy than they do now? It's 56% gross margin, which just means it's a good business. And that business is very simple. It's an advertising business. It's like a newspaper. That's what it is, except they don't have to write anything. They nick everybody else's content. And they have a 23% return on invested capital. So again, they invest $100. Next year, they have 123. It's not too bad. And profits are growing up 10%. So everyone's sort of going, Google is too late to the party. Uh, they've missed the AI boat and Bing is going to replace it. And no, I don't think that's going to happen that quickly. And I think Google has got so much money and talent and ability to gobble up small competitors that they will very likely stick around and do a do a pretty decent job. So the advances they're making in AI, I think, are pretty good. Yeah, you can always laugh at these models and all of that, but they're going to integrate it into search. Everyone uses Google. So as Google gets smarter, we are going to stick around. It's that simple. So I think they have a very, very good chance of maintaining their search dominance. They just have to be not much worse than ChatGPT or Claude from Amazon or any of those. They have a huge advantage because we say, Google it. How often do you say a day, just Google it? Have you Googled it? I've Googled it. Right? When you become that dominant, quite hard to actually knock you off your pedestal. You look at the stock chart here. Well, it's been a... This has been a straight line up almost, right? Like our indicator did a very nice job here inside TradingView, which I'm always excited about because I kind of been working on this for absolute ages. Bit of a sell-off season here. There was a bit of a sell-off there. That was well caught. And then we went pretty much green without interruption, more or less up. There were a few little blips around along the way. Went really green again here. Nice rally called that. Right now we're going really nice and green again, so I have no reason to doubt that we'll be be uh, be, be be wrong this time. So I I like it, and of course an indicator is just an indicator, uh, even though it's a pretty pretty sophisticated, pretty pretty good one. So where is our resistance uh, right now? There isn't that much of it. Where is that at one ninety? There is a bit, which is that green candle up there, but it doesn't look super 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 strong. So I would say. Google looks very, very bullish. What's the market doing with Google? By market, I mean 
the uh, lovely Wall Street traders, the big boys? Well, the largest trades here in the last couple of days were four days ago bearish, two days ago bearish. Selling calls, it could just be profit taking, it could be hedging. And then we've got 1 million here bullish call option. That's definitely bullish. 1.1 million again, buying another call option into September and December this year. So there is some big money being chucked around that feels pretty bullish on, on, on Google as well. Next stock, and I did I made a video on that today, actually, if you want to check that out, which is the Elon's little baby, Tesla. Margins are terrible, 19%. Return on invested capital at 17%, probably the worst on this list. But they're growing. 22% a year. Why do I like it? In a nutshell, yes, there are EVs. Car companies are not particularly hot on. They have low margins. But really what it's about is that Elon has managed to deliver on stuff that didn't exist. Right? EVs basically didn't exist. I knew the technology was there to some extent, but nobody's done it on scale. He's doing robots now, robo-taxis, energy. And none of those things, in my view, are priced into what Tesla is doing. Tesla is just the dominant EV player. That's very nice. It's those other things that in itself could vastly exceed the current valuation, each one of those. If they do them all right, I think they'll vastly exceed the current market cap. So um, check out the video that I'm putting out today on, 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 on uh, Tesla, and you get a little bit of an idea of like, the, the bigger picture with what could be happening here with, with Tesla coming up. So looking at the chart of Tesla, it's one of the stocks that's actually underperformed. And if you look at this chart here, you can see the blue lines I've drawn in. This is sort of the downtrend, right? General downtrend. Bit of a breakout here of, of the downtrend, which I feel might be the beginning of it. And why do I say I feel that? Because my indicator in the back, that one, is just turned the deep, deepest shade of green I've seen in quite some time. Um, so I think there's a very good chance that going into August, the, the robo-taxi presentation and, and, and everything else, the master plan four that Elon's working on right now, when that gets out more and we see the, the vision, the stock market likes a story. In the short term, the stock market likes a story. You just give them numbers, it's sort of boring. But if you give them a big visionary picture and you can show that you've done crazy stuff like put rockets into space and then have them land on a teacup, then that's kind of a good credential here, right? So uh, is there a massive resistance here? There is a bit at $200, not insurmountable, but there is some resistance there. If we look at Wall Street's doing with Tesla stock here, look at dark pool trades, then yeah, the big trades are bearish. It's the occasional bull, bull in there, but it's still pretty, pretty bearish. I quite like that. I think Wall Street is again and again wrong on Tesla because lack of vision, very similar. So they just look at the margins and they go, this sucks. Uh, and I get that. But I think I think there was a story there. And if you just deliver on one of those three ideas, energy, robo-taxis, and um, robots, just one of those will blow people out of the water. But we'll see. So what happens? The next company is one whose software I've used, and I absolutely hated it, uh, canceled it uh, across my businesses, and it's Salesforce, ticker CRM. But look at the numbers. Gross margin is 73%. Okay. Profit growth is 18%. And they just dominate the CRM market. I mean, the ticker is CRM. And they basically are creating this AI assistant called Einstein, which is just, I mean, it reminds me of the clippy thing that Microsoft used to have with Windows, what was it? 311 or 95 or something. Apparently, it's going to boost productivity. And you know what? It probably will. Because even if Salesforce makes pretty complex, pretty average software, in my opinion, plug the thing into AI and it'll just get better. And it's so clumsy, it'll get a lot better. So I just think people will like it. Salespeople will like it. There's a lot of stuff in sales you can automate and, and, and data you can automate. And people are going to pay extra for it. Simple as that. You're the dominant player. No company in their right mind goes, oh, well, those 5,000 sales agents I've got, they all use this CRM for, made by Salesforce. Why don't we change the software and see how it goes and how that impacts sales? No one's going to do that. Because the risk that you screw up deals is so big and so expensive and so risky that the people running those departments are going, no, 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 
no, no change. And that's why enterprise software is such a good business. Because once it's established, once thousands of people are using it inside a company, nobody wants to be the one that says, let's change it, shall we? Could be better. Or it could be a freaking disaster. Nobody wants to do that. People don't want to get their heads chopped off. So therefore, dominant market position, a bit like Microsoft, they will therefore get more of this dosh that's you know flowing around the AI market. Next company, a little bit more exciting. It's got gross margins of 80%, 80. Profits are growing at 30% a year. They serve both government and commercial sectors. They just want a nice contract with the US Department of Defense. Basically, it's pretty clear they are the government's favorite AI data and sort of space analytics company out there. And of course, I'm talking about Palantir. If you look at Palantir as a stock, it's done pretty well this year. And that's despite the fact that Palantir basically snarls at Wall Street, loathes them, and keeps telling them, we don't care, and we are not here to make a profit, which is a weird thing to do. It's sort of the Amazon approach to the financial markets, because it's going to go, we're going to grow. We're not even charging people for this. It's free. Enjoy. Because once you've got some of the uh, you know, source, well, you can't, you can't go back. Um, stock is a little bit littered in this sort of 25 to 27 range, which is, let me just get a pen, which is, you know, this high here, that high there, that high here, this one higher, that one there, that one here. And guess what? We're there again. And then you get these two out, outliers. But one, two, three, four, five, six highs tend not to lie. <laughs> it's a little hard to break through that. How do they break through that? Well, look, the market is already positioning themselves up here at $30. So a lot of the market is bullish on this. There's also a bit here at $27. It's just a question of more big contracts and patience and patience and patience, I, I think. In my opinion, Palantir is going to, going, to, going to dominate as a sort of operating system. And there is, a, there is an impatient hound here who says, I've only been to the beach twice today. I feel like I should be going out again. That's what he's saying. And of course, he deserves that. So I like Palantir. Um, Wall Street is not, um, is not a fan. I know. I, I hear you, Winston. I hear you. Give, give us a few minutes. Uh, let's have a look at... Um, oh pretends desperation. We literally just came back from the beach with a lovely lunch uh, by the beach. He had a bit of a swim. Um, and that was the second lovely outing today. Now, biggest trade here is a... You sit down. See those sad, sorry little eyes. He has a very, very tough life. Um, we've got mostly bearish trades, and I'd expect that. I would not expect Wall Street at this point to go, we love you crazy people because we don't understand what you do and you're not charging your customers. You are nutty. That's basically where they're at. So I quite like it for that. I like a bit of nuttiness. Amazing margins, 77%. Profits are growing at 47% a year. And it is Cloudflare. Yeah, what the heck do they do? Edge computing and cybersecurity. Basically, they got a new like AI sort of security tool, which I think could again give them significant growth. They're pretty dominant in the enterprise space. So similarly to what I said about CRM, Salesforce above, same story applies. You've got a good product, you've got a lot of customers. They are now going to pay you more. Why? Because AI makes it easier to hack you. All these super powerful computers out there, the GPUs, thanks NVIDIA, make it easier to hack. And therefore, you're going to have to spend more on cybersecurity. So we, 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 we like it for that reason. Let's have a look at the chart. Is this a good time to buy or not? Okay, what do you see when you look at that chart? Pretty, pretty volatile stuff, right? So it's definitely not one for, for the faint-hearted. We had this gap down here where we basically had some disappointing earnings and, and that really, really walloped the stock. Now, our little indicator actually said sell before that, sort of somewhere along here. Uh, one would have exited. And then it dropped and dropped and dropped. And then we got the buy signal back, I would say, here. So that's a pretty good move, right? Pretty good trade. And right now, it's turning more green. And therefore, I think it's a good one. Now, we need to fill this gap, which is up to about $84, $85. But look at the market. The market is already positioning itself back 
at $100. So I think the exuberance is back. And all that would do is bring us back to sort of February, April, sorry, February, March, April uh, territory with $100. So I think it's a technically a pretty good setup. I, I quite like it. And then let's have a look at how the bastards on Wall Street are treating this stock. I shouldn't call them the bastards on Wall Street, should I? I should call them the, the lovely, fluffy human beings who happen to be bankers who really wanted to make the world a better place. Well, they have um, not done very many trades on them, but the last big one here is a $80 call option sold. Could have been profit-taking. It could have been profit-taking. Um, might well be if it expires fairly soon. But yeah, not a lot of movement there from, from, from Wall Street on, on Cloudflare. That wraps up our little list of nine stocks. I remember, of course, always do your own research. Uh, Winston can only dig so much for you and, and don't like YOLO in on a single stock. That's always a bad idea. If you enjoyed the video, you found it helpful, get yourself a free 30-day trial to tradevision.io here, which is a platform we built to give you the same quality data that Wall Street has and smash the like button, share the video with a friend or a golden retriever. And I wish you a beautiful day. Which you just asked me, Felix, is it too late to get in on the AI rally? And I said, Winston, you know better than that. Of course, it's not too late. And I'll show you exactly why. I will also walk you through my favorite AI stocks at the moment. And when is the right time to buy them? And I'll